When you're driving or walking, it's easy to express how fast you're going. In an airplane, asking about speed is a more complicated question. Are you talking about ground speed or airspeed? If you're talking airspeed, is it indicated or true airspeed, or something else? Airspeed, true airspeed, is how fast you're moving relative to the air around you. Indicated airspeed is what's reading on your airspeed indicator. Ground speed is how fast you're moving relative to solid ground and is the same as what we mean when we talk about a car or a person's speed on the ground. Which speed do we need if we're talking about different scenarios? Let's look at a few. First, if we're trying to compute the tailwind or headwind component we're experiencing, do we need airspeed or ground speed? We actually need both. Airspeed is how fast we're moving relative to the air around us. If the wind is moving that air around us, it's going to affect our airspeed. For the purposes of airspeed, there's no difference between an aircraft that's moving through the air at 50 knots or a stationary airplane with the wind blowing into it at 50 knots. However, wind will affect ground speed, whether speeding up or slowing down the aircraft relative to the ground. We need to take the difference of our airspeed and ground speed to get our head or tailwind component. Also, it's true airspeed, not indicated, that we need. Indicated airspeed read off our instrument needs to be corrected to true. Modern units will calculate this for us. Next, when we learn about airspace in private pilot training, we find out that certain airspace has speed restrictions, like Class Bravo restricts us to 250 knots. But is this airspeed or ground speed? The point of speed restrictions is to slow down aircraft in congested areas to give controllers and pilots time to stay separated. An aircraft traveling at 250 knots indicated airspeed with a 30 knot tailwind may be doing a higher ground speed than the restriction, but an oncoming aircraft also at 250 indicated with a 30 knot headwind will be slower over the ground. Combined, the two aircraft will have the same rate of closure, which is important for staying separated, than they would with no wind. So it's indicated airspeed, not ground speed we're worried about with speed restrictions. Next, instrument approach categories are based on the speed you're flying on final approach. For example, a Cat B aircraft will be doing between 91 and 120 knots. This is indicated airspeed. FAR 97.3 defines approach categories based on VREF. If your aircraft doesn't have a published VREF, you use another V-speed, VSO times 1.3. All V-speeds are indicated airspeeds. This includes things like stall speeds and maneuvering speeds, among others. Lastly, departure procedures will often list minimum climb gradients that must be met to fly the procedure. You may know the formula for converting a required climb gradient to feet per minute is to take your climb speed, divide by 60, and multiply the result by the gradient. But what kind of climb speed do you use? It's ground speed. Let's say you determine that a 90 knot climb and zero wind, in other words 90 knots in both air and ground speed, will just barely get you the required climb gradient for the procedure. Now let's say you're taking off with a tailwind. Never a good idea, but especially in this case, because it'll increase your ground speed. It pushes the aircraft further in distance traveled for the same amount of altitude gained, which could cause you to have trouble clearing obstructions on the climb out. In general then, ground speed is useful for navigation and climb and descent angles, while airspeed is needed for aircraft performance and traffic control. Knowing how to calculate these values is important, but being able to know when to apply which to different scenarios is what true expertise looks like. For more training insights, head over to the Flight Insight website linked here or in the description today.